I reckon it's time to reckon. <laughs> Let's start with Sigma. Sigma was kind enough to send me quite a few things to try out. I also have brushes from them. This isn't everything, but it was everything that was in my testing drawer, and I would like to talk about it with you because I have made my final decisions. So first up, this is the Sigma Hydro Melt Lip Mask in the shade All Heart. Now this isn't something I would wear during the day because it is pretty thick, and it did give me the white ring, but I wear it at night and it's a very nice moisturizing lip mask. I don't know, I think price point wise, this isn't much cheaper than the Laneige, if not the exact same price as the Laneige sleeping mask, but it is nice and that will kind of be <laughs> a through line for uh, what we see here. Okay, next up, let's talk about the highlighter. I have the shade Sizzle. I'm trying different lighting for this overhead filming and it, I'm not sure it's really working, but you know, here we are. But that's the highlighter shade there. This highlighter is perfectly adequate. I am serving you an adequate dress made of materials that is on my body. I'm just not really in a highlighter era of this sort. It's something that you can really build up and make super pigmented. It's also something that if you use the right tools can make it really light on the cheek. I also think that the shade's just maybe a little bit too deep for me. It's, it's good. It's just not something that I would personally purchase right now with where my taste is in makeup. And like I just said about the lip mask, it's good. It's good. If you were in the market for a, a new highlighter and they have a shade for you that you would really enjoy, I would recommend it. Sigma makes good stuff. It makes really, 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 really quality stuff. And I think that's great. And I think their price point's pretty good. It's like right in that... I guess it's like in the mid-range, maybe a little bit more expensive than the mid-range, but honestly, like, I wasn't disappointed by anything, but this was the thing that I think I was the least impressed by. I'll swatch it next to some of my other highlighters for you. Here are some of my other powder highlighters for reference. I think it's going to be closest in formula to this Flex highlighter from Milk Makeup that they don't make anymore, but you can see how much lighter that one is, and sometimes this one is a little too deep for me but they both have that same quality where like you can make it as bold as you want or as not bold as you would like. You can make it as bold as you want or you can make it not super bold just depending on how you apply it. I've had this for a while and I've even contemplated decluttering this. Then I have the Mars highlighter from Lunar Beauty but I don't even think that they really are selling these anymore. This one's a lot more red and this one's much more shiny as opposed to being having the glitter particles in it. I would say that the Sizzler highlighter from Sigma definitely has the most shimmer particles in it. This one's just a lot smoother and that would be more of the formula I'm into. But I also had to be very careful with this as far as depth goes. You can clearly see that that is red on my skin. And then finally I have the Rare Beauty highlighter and this is in the shade Enlighten. And this is like a different beast altogether. This is a baked highlighter and I find this actually more difficult to work with than the Sigma. I have like big issues with this Rare Beauty uh, highlighter. And everyone really loved this. People really raved about it last year. My friend Ananda sent this to me. I would never have bought this highlighter, but it was like the most modern powder highlighter that I had come my way. And I was just like, well, I'll hold on to it because it's like, it's not bad, but I just, don't, I don't get why people like it so much. Not only that, it's an incredibly fragile formula. Like these break all the time. I've seen it happening to the new blushes in this formula. So I just don't think this is really, really it. So if you are looking for a blinding highlighter, I would recommend the Sigma over the Rare Beauty, but this might be more expensive than the Rare Beauty because Rare Beauty is also pretty fairly priced. I will be passing this along to someone who will definitely enjoy it way more than I do. This is one of the things that impressed me the most from Sigma. They sent me two of their bronzers. I think they were letting me decide which one would be better for my skin tone and my undertone. I zoomed you in a little bit, so hopefully that's a little bit better. So here are the two shades. This is the light shade, and then this is the medium shade. And these are really, really nice and creamy and blendable. They're not cream formulas, but they're like a nice creamy powder. I have found these are really uncomplaining. They're a really, really great bronzer formula, but when I have all of the bronzers I have in my makeup collection, these just don't really compare to me. They, it wouldn't stand out in my collection. When I was testing it, I pulled it out quite a bit because I was thinking about it. And I do think for a light bronzer, that's a pretty great undertone. They are super pigmented, but I never had 
issues with them blending. I don't always think pigment means good, but that could mean good to somebody. So I would just say that know that going into it. It's just not something I'm going to use. With I don't think it'd be worth me even keeping the light one, but they are beautiful, again, just like the highlighter if you're in the market for a bronzer, especially if you have, like, more yellow-leaning undertones than me. This, like, peachy bronze probably will work even better for you. It looked good on me, but it might even look better on you. I have been more into, like, the rosy-toned bronzers right now, as opposed to something that leans into the yellow and orange. But let me swatch my other bronzers so you can just see. I only grabbed my powder bronzers, so, so that's the Gucci bronzer in one. This is the Victoria Beckham bronzing brick in the shade one. And then I also have the Surratt bronzer in Soleil Dew. So as you can see, I enjoy a little bit of a lighter pigmentation, but like I said, these bronzers weren't difficult to work with at all. They're just not really my style. I just know I won't use them, so I want to find them a better home. But again, Sigma really did that. They're pretty great. So next I have their powder blush in the shade Tiger Lily, and this doesn't really do anything for me, if I'm being honest, and it's not really the formula. It's just the color. It is very much like NARS Orgasm, where it has like this peachy pink base with some gold glitter in it. I would say that this is a little less sparkly than the NARS shade. So like it could be a good alternative. Here's what I'll say. The formula, again, like all of the other Sigma products, is pretty good. And I, I don't dislike it. I'll just never wear this shade and that's why I'm passing it on. I don't even have anything to swatch next to this to compare to it because it's not a blush color I'm attracted to. And I think they have a matte formula of their powder blush and I think if I were to try something else from them, I would pick one of those shades. I have looked on their website. Their blush shades in this formula don't really tempt me in any way. So I don't know that's something that I would ever come up that I would ever want to try. But I'm glad I got to try it to be able to speak to it. Again, if you're into this sort of thing, I think it's worth your money. But it's just not something I'm going to use. Then I have their cream blush in the shade Pashmina which, oh god, why is there a hair in it? So there, that is that shade. This is a really pretty shade of blush, but again, it's not a shade of blush I would wear too often. This formula is really breezy, though. Like, it's really, really, kind of like when you touch it, it immediately melts. It feels really balmy, but it performs more like a cream. I don't know if that's gonna make any sense to you. Like, I felt like it had pretty good longevity on my skin. I feel like it was really easy to blend, but I don't feel like it left me with a balmy, it left me with more of like a skin finish. So like, it kind of has the same texture of the Nectar Pigment Balms from Ritual Defeat, if you've ever tried those, but it doesn't, it sets. Another formula it reminds me of is these. This is one of the Finding Ferdinand Summer Abroad blushes that Khaki released with Finding Ferdinand. Now this shade's not the same, but the formula is pretty similar. Now the last time I got something from Finding Ferdinand in a blush formula, the formula was a lot stiffer than this. The new formula of this is not the same. I do prefer this formula from Finding Ferdinand. I don't know what their regular formula is like. I've only received the ones from Khaki. I've never bought anything from them, but these formulas are really similar where like they have like a nice set down, but they're really creamy and easy to blend out on the cheek. The only shade that I would have that is similar to Pashmina is going to be a powder blush, and it's the Dior blush in the shade Coral. This is their original formulation, not the new one, but this is the closest thing I have. I don't wear this shade that much, and I don't imagine that me having this blush in this formula is going to encourage me to wear it. This is a cream. It's going to go off faster, whereas I probably will be able to get away with having this around longer, even if I'm not using it all the time and I won't feel that bad about it. So I'm going to pass on this. But I will say of like the cheek formulas, other than the bronzer, this would be my second favorite formula that I got to try from Sigma. It's really pretty. And I, if they made a, a really knockout shade that I felt like I needed to try, I would get it. But uh, as it stands right now, that's not the case. But I liked it. And I, again, it's something I recommend, but you don't need to, like, go out and buy it right now. Like, if, but if you are looking for a color that they have, you won't be disappointed in this. So let's talk about these lip products. This is the lip oil. And I, this is a lip gloss. This is a, this is a lip gloss. But what I will say, it has 
some pretty good tenacity. It stays on the lip for a long time once you put it on, but like it's super thick and gloopy. And this does have a shade. The shade I have is tint. And here's another thing I will say. I normally like these big applicators, but for this formula, I hate this. It's so hard to get an even application of this. And it looks like something that's holding a lot of product, but the second I swipe, everything in there immediately comes off and I don't get like an even application. So, and I did use this one on my lips because I did, I'm going to keep this one because this is something that I could easily just keep at my work desk and just throw it on as a lip product and just to have there. So I am going to keep this one. It's like not the most exciting keep from Sigma and it's actually not the best thing I've tried from Sigma, but I'm going to keep it because I can finish it. Then we have the lip cream in the shade Begonia, which I actually have come around to this lip color. I just don't see myself using it that often. And I did not put my lips on this one. So let me get an applicator. So it is a really pretty shade. On my lips, it reads a little bit more concealer-y than that, because like on my arm it looks a little bit different, but on my lips it's a light, it's a lighter color than my lips. I would love to be able to pass this on without my lips having been in this packaging at all. And I'm so, you know, this isn't a lip color I think I would use that much. Also, I have some other lip products that are close to this. My friend Ananda sent me this. This is from Vive. It's one of their satin lipsticks. And I wore this the other day in a video with a, a really pretty lip liner. And I liked it a lot more than I think I ever liked this color. So I just would love to be able to pass this on to a friend without getting my lips in it. I like the formula. I also don't think I like this like liquid lipstick, but not a matte. Like, I would rather, I, I prefer a bullet lip, so I think that this is just a little bit lost on me overall as a product. And then finally from Sigma, we have the Spicy palette. Of all the things I tried from Sigma, this was by far my favorite thing I tried from them, which is absolutely unexpected because eyeshadow is just like not my jam right now. I mean, this isn't the most challenging or creative color story by any means, and I'm aware of that, but it's a color story that I really, really enjoy. Now, I didn't try all the shades because the shades I did try, I just kept using them because they were so beautiful, and I like especially loved this center shade. This formula is has nice pigmentation, not overly powering, super easy to blend out. It was really hard to get myself backed up into a corner with this formula. Their sparkly shades are surprisingly beautiful. Not indie sparkle quality, but like very sparkly. Really, really pretty. I love the way that this looked on my green eyes. If you have green eyes and you've been looking for something easy to go with your green eyes, I, this might be the way to go. This formula is so good. I highly recommend you try a Sigma eyeshadow if you've been eyeing one, but if you're not in the market, you know, obviously you, if you know, you know, like I'm not here trying to push anything to you, but what it really boils down to is that if I kept this eyeshadow palette, it will not be loved here. I loved testing it. I loved trying it, but it's pretty close to some other things. But let me swatch the palette for you. And if you know about my eyeshadow collection, which you might not, this is pretty standard fare for the things that I like. And I already have that thing. And this palette is barely touched and I would love to pass it on to a friend. And whoever gets this from me, it's going to love it so much. It's also pretty close to the only Pat McGrath palette I still have intact. Not exactly the same undertones. I would say that this is a little more like cool leaning. It has like a little bit more gray in it than this. But like, I feel like the eye looks I've made with this are very similar to the eye looks I typically make with this. I have this. I actually prefer the mattes from Sigma than I do from the ones from Pat McGrath. But this is my only intact Pat McGrath palette, and I, I want to have one where I keep it intact. So I will just keep loving this at the rate at which I love it, which is like not that much. Like when I say at the rate at which I love it, I just don't pull this palette out that much. And that would be exactly what happened to the Sigma palette if I kept it. Here's everything I'm getting rid of that Sigma is sent to me in PR. If you ever want to shop with Sigma, I do have a promo code with them. It's Hope Mess Tom. And that gets you 10% off anything that's not on sale already. Sometimes it goes up to 25%. I'm not one of the influencers who's going to 
tell you when that happens because I'm someone who has overspent on makeup before and so I just try not to encourage that with what my actions but that's there for you if you ever want to shop from them. I think they have some really, really great stuff. I would love to try more from them in the future, but I cannot wait to find these new home because whoever gets them is going to be so lucky. Here are some odds and ends. I'm going to work my way from right to left as I do this. I was gifted two lip liners from MAC, the shade Cork and the shade Chestnut. So Cork is on top and then Chestnut is below it. And I never tried the MAC formula before they were sent to me in PR. I actually quite enjoyed them. I thought they were, they're really nice. They blend out pretty nice. They're a stiffer formula. I like a little bit of like a, a middle ground when it comes to my lip liners. I also prefer sharpenable lip liners and I love brown lip liner. I mean like I'm so basic. The 90s lip, I've been doing it since, not since the 90s, but I've been into that kind of lip since before it kind of became popular more recently again. But I really, really, really like these. So let me grab some of my other lip liners to compare. So I have the Victoria Beckham lip definer in the shade 5, which is lighter than both of those, which is great because I thought if anything was going to dupe it that would be the one. Then I have Endless Cacao from Makeup Forever which is much more cool leaning than those other browns and I tend to wear more cool toned things if not neutral so <laughs> this kind of gets a lot of play when it comes to lip liners. I also have this Hollywood Honey lip liner from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the creamiest pencil I have other than one other thing we'll talk about in a second and it's obviously very different from them. <laughs> I know you're seeing a lot of brown lip liners and you're probably like do you really need all of those? No. However, my lip liner collection, it only grew by two and I only had four to begin with. I don't feel bad about having six lip liners. It's not a category that I feel out of control about. I also have one other lip liner and this is from Half Magic. It's their Sculptitude 2-in-1 Lip Crayon and it has a taupe side. And this taupe is pretty similar to the Endless Cacao shade from Makeup Forever. They like read very similarly on the lips. And then there's also a black lip liner. And these are a creamier, probably a little bit closer to the Charlotte Tilbury formula than the pencil formulas I have. I really enjoy this. This has really good longevity on the lips, even if I'm wearing a lip gloss or something, like these really hold up. I think of this as one lip product. I mean, obviously it's one product. I don't think I would ever use them separately. So I don't think I would ever pull this out just to use the taupe because it, it's much like any kind of like face palette or something. It's like, I, I think of this as like, it's its own lip product and it's a blend of the black and the taupe and I really like it. So I think of this more as a lipstick to me as opposed to being two lip liners if that makes sense. And then I like to put a gloss, a sparkly gloss on it. A cool tone sparkly gloss on that combo is like to die for. So I think for most people you wouldn't need both. And the taupe is definitely what I would use more. So I'm okay to have endless cacao and also this in my collection. But I will probably keep this in my lipstick drawer as opposed to where I keep my lip liners, which is not the same drawer, surprisingly. So I'm gonna hold on to that. Okay, let's get rid of some things you already know about. So this is the Dr. Dennis Groves Plump and Repair Lip Treatment. I don't recommend this, but I have I use it all the time. I, it's probably the thing that I've used the most out of all of these things, but I've also had it for a bit of time. I got it at the end of last year in friend mail from my friend Andromeda. And I like it. I also, it's interesting because the plumping is definitely makes your lips red. I don't think it's the most intense plumper I've ever used, but you do have to be careful with the placement of it. But I don't mind that. Like, that's not something that bothers me, but I think it bothers a lot of people. This is also pretty expensive. I don't think I would ever spend the amount of money that it actually is. But what I will say is, my lips do feel more hydrated and feel better after I use it, even though it is like a plumping formula. So it doesn't leave my lips in distress. I don't really know how they did that. But I'm happy to use this up, but I wouldn't rebuy it, and I don't recommend it, actually. Another Half Magic product. These kind of go together. So this is like the tool to apply the face gems. And I wasn't really sure if I was going to like ha enjoy the this at all. I didn't know if I was going to be a face gem 
person. So I'm really happy that my friend Andromeda sent these to me because I've had so much fun playing with them. So you can also get rhinestones and use like lash glue, but these have an adhesive on them and it's so easy and so fun. I've loved it and I would absolutely rebuy these because like I've used so many. I've been going out dancing recently and these are like really nice for that. And even on camera, they're a lot of fun. They're so, so fun. It's just so fun to play with the gemstones on the face. This adhesive is really good. I went out dance, like I said, I went out dancing and they held up on my eyes all night. I will say it's annoying to remember to take them off before you wash off your makeup, which is something you have to like be cognizant of. But I really like these. I don't really know where I'm gonna put them in my drawers. I love these, like I love them so much. So this came relatively recently in PR. This is the lip oil in the shade Fruit Punch. And <laughs> I have some questions about this. I love this color. It is like a, a, a pretty coral. And you may notice that it has the same applicator that I complained about in the lip oil from Sigma. However, this formula goes a long way on this applicator and I love it. It's a beautiful color. It smells just like fruit punch. It also tastes like fruit punch. It's like super sweet. And not that I'm like trying to eat my lip oil, you know, but it, it's a nice, it's a pleasant thing all around. So I'm not a big lip oil person. If you've been around, you know, I've been kind of like, I don't get it. I get this. I love this. I don't know if they make this in a clear. I hope they do. I would love it in clear, but with still the fruit punch scent and flavor because I love it. It's so fun. I got this in PR like sometime last week and I've, it's just been like, I've been slathering on my lips, not even doing makeup. I just kind of like slather on my lips. It's not so detectable that you can't wear it if you're not wearing other makeup. Like if you're, if you're one of those people who like, if part of you's made up, you feel like the rest of you needs to made up. It's not one of those types of formulas. It's not, it's super sheer. I, I love this thing. I want one in my handbag. I want one everywhere in my house. I love it. This is thin. It doesn't wear like a lip gloss. It melts into my lips. It keeps them nourished. I really like it. And it tastes, <laughs> I know that's such a weird thing to say, but it tastes so good. I have two of these. These are the, I think they're called the glitter pills. And I have the shade Microcosm and the shade Holy Goldie. I have been, I mean, can you tell? I've really been enjoying using microcosm because it's like this holographic silver and then holy goldie is a holographic gold so i'm at the point with this that i know that i really really like this formula they say you can wear it as an eyeshadow i'm not gonna do that <laughs> like that's just not where i'm at on my makeup journey i really love the silver one again i'm like much more into cool tones than i am into like something more yellow like the gold so I know I want to keep Microcosm. I'm a little bit unsure about Holy Goldie. I just don't think I'm going to use this color that much. And I would love to pass this on to someone who would love it more. I would absolutely buy these in another shade. I want one that's not holographic. And I don't know if that exists. I've not really looked into their catalog that much. But like for a glitter liner, I've been I've been enjoying them. Like I've worn that the other shade out dancing and it stayed on my eyes as well as the gemstones so like it it does really set down and I don't feel like it gets all over my face so I think that this is a worthwhile formula to explore if you're in the market for a glitter eyeliner so I like them but I'm gonna pass on the shade I'm gonna keep microcosm then I have the covergirl simply ageless powder this is an excellent powder it's like one of my favorite powders I think I've ever tried. It's really, I think, going to be good for people who have dry skin. I have oily skin, but I still tend to like powder formulas more designed with people who have dry skin in mind because I just, I don't like that powdery finish. And I don't really like a matte finish on my makeup overall. And I just feel like this does a really good job setting everything down. I'm not going to keep this though. I'm currently in love with another powder <laughs> that I recently tried that I like a little bit more than this. Now, I, if I could do it all again, I would buy the lightest shade of it. And I think I would like it a little bit more even than I like the translucent one. What's going on is I got the new Hourglass pressed powder. I'm obsessed with it. This is like pretty close on the level of the Charlotte Tilbury powder, the pressed powder. So if you like that and you've been, look, been tired of buying from Charlotte Tilbury, or if you, you know, just want to save some money, this could be something worth your time. I think it's like absolutely worth your time. It's, I love it. <laughs> I really love it. But 
that hourglass powder definitely is impressing me a little bit more it has a little more blur to it than this and i love the blur so i'm gonna keep playing with that but i would love to find this new home it's a very excellent powder this is actually relatively new to me but this is the urban decay all nighter and i went to a concert and danced and it held my makeup in place this is not something i <laughs> would ever need to like go out and always have it is very similar to the fix plus stay over which came out more recently like this is this the gold standard is this i don't love the scent of the all-nighter but i have been going out more and i think i'm gonna run through this pretty quickly so i'll just hold on to this for whenever i'm done with this <laughs> and that's gonna be perfectly fine for me i'm okay having both of them and this is kind of like my backup and you know it'll probably take me forever to get through but that's okay and I'm okay with that, but I like it. I'm probably the last person you're hearing like review all nighter and be like, it's pretty good. So let me just add my, my hat into the ring. It's pretty good. Here's some more like odds and ends brands. I recently in a video talked about these lipsticks. This is from Hourglass. It's one of their unlocked lipsticks in the shade Tide 302. And so much like that Sigma lip color, this is kind of like the same vibe. I don't like this formula. Uh, it just like isn't a very high quality lipstick formula in my opinion. And I hate the packaging. So it's tilted this one way and the product it has to go in that way every time you can't put it in this way you can't put it in this way it has to go in that one way every time and i think that's stupid <laughs> especially because like why am i why am i fussing to get my lipstick back in the bullet that's so dumb i think this is flawed and i think they need to go back to drawing board packaging is beautiful this is a little bit dented up but you know khaki probably ruled over it with her chair at some point if i had to guess then i have this <laughs> lip story in the shade nine and i guess sephora is doing away with their lip stories because i tried to link this after talking about it and i was like if you're into like these weird yucky colors try this color no it didn't exist anymore so I don't love this formula, but this color is pretty cool. And so I am going to keep it. Now, I wasn't sure if I was going to keep it or not, because like like I said, I don't think the like the longevity of the formula is really good, but I have enjoyed wearing it with other yucky colors on the lips, kind of as like a highlighter yucky <laughs> color. And it works pretty well for that. So I'm going to keep it. It's just like not something in like with a lip liner honestly, so killer. So I really like the shade and I like playing with the shade, but it's not something. It's super exciting and I guess you can't buy it anymore anyway. So there's that. So then I have the Tom Ford cream and powder eye color in the shade Naked Bronze. And my friend Rebecca sent this to me. And so there's the cream shade. This is like kind of long discontinued at this point. And there are a lot of products kind of similar to this on the market right now. Uh, I think of the Auric I forget what they're called, but the Auric ones. Whenever I tried the Auric ones, I like wasn't quite into something like this the way that I'm more into something like this now. And I was super excited to try the Tom Ford one because it's Tom Ford. But here's here's some letdowns. You can't buy this anymore, but here's what I will say. The bottom, this is plastic. So if you're on the go, plastic's probably better, but the Auric ones came in, I think they came in glass which I prefer. The Auric ones lasted a lot longer on my eyes than this Tom Ford one. So I think I'm gonna just rehome this. I feel like Colin, Queer Bones Colin would really like this. So I'm probably just gonna send it to them. It's like, I feel like it's the right colors for them. And I feel like they have less problems with their eyes than I do making things last. But like, I did not have a great time with this. It kind of disappeared on me every time I wore it. So uh, I'm glad I never bought one of these because I would have been very disappointed in it. But also I'm glad I didn't buy one of these because it's just not something I would have a high use value in. And in my opinion, I think the Auric ones are better. So I would go with that route than trying to find one of these on a resale website just because it's a Tom Ford product. Rebecca also sent me this. This is the e.l.f. No Budge Cream Eyeshadow. I did not find that to be the case and it's pure white and uh, I, I just don't have a lot of use for this. I used it a couple of times as like an eyeshadow base 
It wasn't my favorite. I'll just keep using the NARS one. Maybe I'll find someone who will enjoy that. Then I have these. These are from About Face. And I was excited to try these when these were sent to me by my friend Andromeda. They're the uh, smoke stick. And the first comparison that all of us made to these when these were released is Surat has the smoky eye baton. And they're kind of the same vibe where there is a cream on one side. The smoky eye batons from Surat are a lot thinner and feel more like an eyeliner. And then the other side is a puff that has a powder shadow on it. I tried these on camera once and I did not have that much of an issue blending them. Every time after that time, I had an issue getting the creams to blend evenly. So there's this blue one. These cream shadows are so hard to blend. And even though the smoky eye baton didn't work out for me, there was something very effortless about it. My issue with that product, it didn't have longevity on the eyes. My problem with these is that I couldn't make them look pretty on my eyes. That was like the big issue. They were just so, so tough to work with. And my other issue, and that I'm only speaking to these three shades because this is what I got for free and I wasn't interested in like buying it. The only thing that I would consider to be real smoky would be this center shade. And then I feel like the green and the blue are more like very pedestrian, like very straightforward versions of the color. Whereas like this purple and this lighter purple, they're like, they're giving the energy of smoke. And that's because like they're cool tones. So I get it because they're gray. <laughs> they like have some gray in them. I like did not find these a pleasure to use or, or anything like that. So oh, maybe I can find a home. I don't know what happened because the first time I tried them, I feel like I didn't have an issue. But I think the first time I tried them, I blended them out with my finger. I couldn't get them to blend out with brushes. And that's my preferred way to apply eyeshadow. Creams, I like to blend them out with a brush. I'll apply a sparkle. But like I also found that because they were so hard to blend, what I liked to do with the one from Surat, blend out the cream shade with the powder. And I just like could not get that to work with these. So these were a little bit of a flop, in my opinion, for what I wanted them to be. But maybe someone else in my life can fi like figure out how to make them work better for them. This one's a tough one. So this is from Gucci. And it is... Oh, their lip it's their lipstick and I'll put it on the screen because it's too hard for me to read right now. Now I did apply this one directly to my lips a couple of times and uh, I'm not a big fan of this. <laughs> I like the packaging. This is like a glass tube. I think it always looked weird when I put it on my lips. Now I don't wear a lot of rusty colors but I made sure whenever I was choosing to wear this as a lip to make sure I was wearing colors that would agree with this undertone. It looks really pretty here and I think it actually looks pretty on the lips. It looks more like a lip stain on the lips like it's not completely opaque and even after building it up it's not completely opaque and I like just couldn't figure out like what was wrong with me or it like what uh, what it was and then when it was on the lips it just kind of felt like a regular liquid lipstick, like kind of uncomfy, but like not, I don't know. I, and I got compliments in the videos that I wore this as a lip product, but I just gotta tell you, I wasn't super impressed with it. I really wanted to love it because it's Gucci and I don't even think I hate it. And it might just be that it's this color. And maybe if I had a different color, I would like see the beauty in it a little bit more because again, like this is just not a color that I'm like putting on my lips a lot. And I got this from my friend Ananda, who I think pulls off these colors, these rusty colors a little bit better than I do with my like fair, like cool leaning skin where her skin's like medium olive. <laughs> I'm fairly certain I could easily find this a new home. So I don't know that it's like a resounding, like I don't recommend this product to you. It's more of like, um, not for me. And I don't know how much these cost, but I would have been disappointed if I had paid that much money for it. Some more steamy feeling products. These are from CoverGirl. They sent, these, they sent these to me in PR, which is bananas. So these are the Outlast lip stains. As an all over stain, not super into them. As a lip liner, as my friend Kelly Goosh kind of taught me the way to wear them, I really like them. I did look up the price of these once and I think that they were $12 and that's where I'm a little bit like, I don't know if I would want to pay $12 for them. This is not something that I would have bought it from any brand. Like even if, like, uh, I think, you know, I think they even have one. Like Victoria Beckham, which I would guess would be like one of my more favorite brands. They have a lip stain and I have like never even tried it because like lip stains aren't my jam. But as lip liners, again, I'm adding more lip liners to my collection. I really like them. So the sh I have the shades here. This is Natural Blush, Brazen Raisin. And then this is the shade Plumberry. 
I'm gonna pass on Plumberry. I just don't like the shade. But I'm gonna keep these two because I really like the way they look with lip glosses on them and your lips are stained. They're just like kind of a great contouring tool. I do think Brazen Raisin is my favorite, but I also really like Natural Blush. Now they did send me the whole line. I'm not trying all of them. This isn't something I'm super into. Me and Tiff swatched them together. They took a bunch. I took the shades that I thought I'd be interested in. And yeah, so I, I, I quite like these. You have to decide whether or not they're going to be worth $12 for you, but and I probably would read up on them after having these for a bit. Like, I actually like these quite a bit. Those are just going to be there now because it's stained. <laughs> and then this is like a one-off thing. This is another thing from Half Magic. It is their glitter puck. And they only have the one shade right now, but hopefully they expand. I like this. I'm just going to reiterate what I've said before in case you didn't see that video where I talked about it. This is really pretty, but in my brain, this is an eyeshadow. I'm not going to wear this as highlighter. Like, I'm not going to wear it anywhere else on my face. So this is just like eight grams of eyeshadow to me. And I definitely have eyeshadows that are like similar to this in color, but I kind of like the whole thing about it being a glitter puck. And I might take some more time to like swatch it against my collection, but this like kind of really pretty like ballerina peachy pink is something I'm like pretty into right now. And I guess it's also kind of trendy. So I am going to keep this because I like it. But I want the brand to cut it down to like two grams of product, smaller jars, less expensive, because I just think that's the way with this kind of formula. I don't think that anyone needs it in this big of a tub. Like, I think that's wasteful. And like, I don't know where in my drawers I'm going to keep it because it's too big to fit where my other single shadows go. And, and it's not a cheek product to me. So I just, I need to find a home for it. And that will also decide its fate. Because if I start, if I, if it goes somewhere and I never pull it out, then it's like, well, then I won't keep it. But it's such a little gorgeous product. And it just, I say little, it's such an enormous gorgeous product. It just doesn't need to be that big. It's not a multi-use product like they say it is, at least to me. It might be to some other people, but for me, it has like one purpose and it's an eyeshadow. Let's talk about these Lukey Lukey blushes. This is a, a small indie brand and this is this this is all the product that they carry at this time. I'm very grateful for the, for the brand to have sent these to me and I'm not, I, it makes it sound like I'm about to roast them. I'm not. So one thing that did happen and mine got shipped from Europe. They took a long haul to get to Pittsburgh. So that's one thing. And so when I got them, a couple of them were loose. And I glued them back, but this one came unglued. But if you buy them in America, they come from E Cosmetics, and I that I think that will be shipped within the U.S. If you bought it there, I really like these. <laughs> I think they're really really pretty. But these are thirty two or thirty three dollars, and that's where I kind of go. I don't know that I would spend that much on them. I have been loving these three, but this berry shade kind of gets lost on me. It, oh, it's. It's loose again. If I'm paying $33 for a product, I like don't want to have to like glue that back in. So that's like, that's a problem I have with them. So that's Beret Berry on my arm right now. This is Cosmo Flush. And I'm going to glue these back in. But I just kept them loose so I could show you. This is Blossom Bloom. And then this is my favorite. This is the shade 1111. And I don't know if this one's supposed to be a highlighter, but the formula is like much thinner than the other ones. And it's it's just very, very shiny. But I love wearing it all over my cheek. And this is definitely the most unique shade of the bunch. So I'm actually definitely going to keep this one. I'm not going to keep Beret Berry because like berry tones are just not my jam, really. I have come around to these two. Now, I don't wear a lot of coral. We just talked about it with the shade from Sigma. This one, for some reason, wears a little bit better on me, and I'm not sure what the difference is entirely. I think it's maybe because it's a little bit more orange and maybe a little bit more neon, and that's doing something for me. And then this pink shade, I had the shade Pop It from West Atelier, and I very rarely used it. And this has like the same energy. I don't know that it's exactly the same. I feel like Pop It was maybe a little more warm. And this gives me that little bit of like pink. It's just not as warm as that. It's also pretty similar to like Classique from Surratt. And like that also was a little bit warm for me. And I don't feel compelled to keep like all of these. But I am going to keep 1111. And I might keep 
I might keep the pink one. Every time I put it on, it's kind of brought me joy. But if like I go a while without using it, then I can just pass on to someone else. I'm gonna get rid of the coral shade, even though it's really pretty. But again, I have that powder coral blush from Dior. And it's just like, I'm not wearing a lot of coral. And like maybe one day that will change, but it's just not right now. And I don't wear a lot of berries. So I'm just gonna pass on those two. And then I'm going to keep 1111 and then the pink shade. It's really gonna come down to your thoughts on whether or not you think that these formulas are gonna be worth the $33. The packaging is cute, but it's not particularly weighted or anything like that. And then who knows if that's gonna happen to you, if it happened to a couple of mine. I do wanna give them like a little bit of grace. Again, mine shipped from Europe and it they like took a while to get here. I don't know what these blushes went through in that time in the shipping. That is a little bit annoying. So um, I don't know if it's the type of glue or whatever. I just don't want that to happen to you if you happen to buy them. But I really love that this indie brand exists. It's LGBTQIA owned. It's very cute. I love the packaging. And I can't wait to see what else they do. I would, I mean, I don't know if they want to only make blushes. If they expand the blush range, I would love to see what those colors look like. And I also would love to see what else they make because I think there's something here. You know, I think there's something here and I, I can't, yeah, I love 11.11. Like, I love that. These set, and they also have pretty good longevity. I forgot to mention that. With everything else on the market, it's like, is it worth going out of your way for? I don't really know. Okay, <laughs> I have some stuff from Finding Ferdinand. Off camera, a while ago, I decided I was going to keep these two lip glosses from Khaki's collection, the Opry Ski collection. We have Haute Cocoa, which I keep calling hot chocolate. And then I also have Cafe Ole. And I have, I'm obsessed with these. I wear them all the time. I throw them in my bag all of the time. And I know Hokoko was like, you know, kind of named after me. It's this really beautiful, cool toned brown, but I also love Cafe LA. It has sparkles in it. It's so gorgeous. The Finding Ferdinand lip gloss formula is lovely, but it's not my favorite lip gloss formula, but I like it enough to like, these colors are really beautiful. And I wouldn't hesitate, like if you wanted to like use their thing where you can make your own shades of the, the lip glosses. I don't think that you would hate these lip gloss formulas and it would be worth it maybe to have that like fun to try that out. So I really enjoy these, but I'm not going to keep this one. This is the shade Mulled Wine and it's just, it's not a shade for me. It's this cinnamony red. These are also all scented. The Cafe Olay one is like the scent of my dreams. It smells like coffee and the Hot Cocoa is a nice cocoa scent, which I like a little bit less than the coffee scent. This one smells like the pine cones at the grocery store. So I don't really like the scent of it. And then that's just not a shade I'm super interested in wearing. It is really pretty, but I think it's just going to be a killer shade for someone else. Whereas like I'm already wearing the shit out of these two. I'm just never going to put that on my lips. I mean, I did to try it out to see if, you know, also to swatch it. Um, but not for me. And then I have these two lip balms that they sent me in PR. I mean, all this was PR, but this PR was separate than this PR. And these are their lip balms. And I gotta tell you, I think these are really disappointing. The formula is really thin and it doesn't do anything for my lips. And I wore this in a video recently, the purple shade. Partway through the video, it just wasn't even on my lips anymore. And even though I don't want my, like, I don't need my lip balm color to last all day, I want my lip balm to be on my lips long enough to, for it to be nourishing. And then if it can't really hold its own in 20 minutes, it's just like not a really great thing for me. I, I love the packaging of these. They're actually really gorgeous packaging. The top, the top cap is plastic, but this part's metal. It's nice and weighty. It feels really good in the hands. I don't like these. And if I can find a friend who'd be willing to use them after I had my lips all up in them, they can have them because this isn't a lip formula for me. And then we have the blushes. So Khaki came out with three like mauve blushes. And just like in her Summer Abroad collection, they came in different depths. They're really pretty. Now, again, I don't like this formula as much as I like the Summer Abroad collection formula. These are just a lot, these are just a lot stiffer. Sorry, these two are the same, <laughs> they're the same blush, but there was just something on my one finger. So they look a little bit different. Just look at the way they blend. They're just like, I don't like this formula as much. And I'm not into berries, as I said before. I like this one. So I am going to keep the lightest shade. It's the shade Sunrise, but I'm going to pass along the medium and the deeper one. I don't know. I just don't like the way that these ones blend out as much as I like 
the original formula. They, they work just fine, but like I thought the original formula was something special. And I know that they did this because like those ones were so liquidy weird, <laughs> but I, that's what I liked about them. And I just liked the way they worked because of that. I'm going to pass on those. And then she also released these two shade adjusters, Chilled and Cozy. Chilled is the purple one. And then Cozy is the, I don't even know what shade we would call <laughs> Cozy, but it is more pink kind of like a magenta. I like the purple one so much. I throw it on all the time on top of things. And again, I'm not really super into berries, but like there's something about this purple that does some like magical stuff to some of my other formulas. And then the pink one is like just like less my thing. So I'm going to pass that one along. I got the whole Odin's Eye Legendary Diversa 2 collection because my friend Annette asked me if I would like her next palette and I did not know it was going to be this big of a release. So we'll start with the lip products just to kind of keep things easier. I decided I was going to keep these three. I'm keeping the pink matte lip in the shade Tulip because it's a very interesting color pink. And then that one's from Judy's collection. I'm actually keeping one from each collection. And then from Tina's collection, I'm keeping the shade Creativity. And then from Annette's collection, I've kept the shade Breath of Fire. So the two lip glosses are called the Glow Formula. A lot of the lip glosses in this collection are just shine. The Glow Formula, they have some shimmer particles in them and they're really beautiful. I like this lip gloss formula. It's not something to write home about, but I liked the colors that these three creators made. So that's really why I'm keeping them because I really just like the colors. I feel like there's not something like these really in the market. I think that Odin's Eye should reconsider their lip gloss packaging going forward, to be quite honest with you, because I hate that I can't see what color is in them. Now, luckily for me, I'm only keeping these three and I kept one from each creator. So each of the packaging is different on them, but I'm still going to mess that up. I'm not going to know which shade is in each one. So I think that was a little bit of a fail. And all these other colors are really beautiful but just not for me. And so I'm not going to actually swatch all of these for you. I've done shorts of all three of the collections where you can see them on my lips. So you can check those out if you're really interested in them. So I like this formula. I think if there are any colors in here that you were interested in, I don't think it's a, a, a bad buy. I may have bought the Creativity shade if I had seen it, but I, I don't know that I would like, I probably wouldn't have bought this collection if Annette wasn't kind enough to like hook me up with it, to be quite honest with you. And it's not because anything against these creators, it's just, you know, I, I try to buy in moderation and to buy a whole collection I never would have done. I would have been very selective about what I bought if I would have bought anything from this collection. So I'm going to pass all of these and none of these have touched my lips. These ones, these three have. So I'm going to keep those ones. I use these disposable wands until I make my decision on a product. I don't know where the box for this one is. <laughs> I don't know where it went. I think I might have gotten rid of it, but I have the boxes for the other ones. And then for the palettes, we have Tina's and then we have Annette's and then Judy's is in the center. The one that I can easily tell you that I have no interest in is the one that Judy created. And that's no offense to Judy at all. It's just a pastel palette. I'm just not interested in pastels. The, it is a really pretty palette. My issue with the pastels is that I felt like every time I felt like I was going to be done with my look, I had to reapply the shadows because they had already faded. And I think that's just like a reality with pastels. I know they're hard to formulate, but I just felt like I had such issues getting them to stick that it wasn't worth my time. But I really enjoyed the looks that I was able to create with this palette. I did use it a couple of times. It is really cute. It is really pretty. But I have a feeling that some of my creative friends, my creative eyeshadow friends, will love this a lot more than me. And I would just love to give them that opportunity. And then this is the one that Tina made. And I think of the color stories, it is my favorite. But what I will tell you when it comes to all of the palettes in this collection, beyond my testing period, I didn't find myself wanting to pull them out at all to keep using. Odin's Eye formula is totally fine. I find that it's more of like a pack and blend kind of formula, which isn't my favorite. And that's why I tend to like neutrals from most brands because it's like I can easily very gently build them up to the opacity that I want. But I find whenever you're working with colors as bright as these ones are, that like they require like a little more finesse. And it's not a skill I don't have. It's just a skill that I feel like I feel like I shouldn't have to apply. This shade right here, though, is kind of like everything. It's the shade Blossom from... Tina's 
that I love that shade. I don't use my eyeshadow palettes all that often. So for an eyeshadow palette to like be brought into my collection, it has to be really special. I'll swatch the rest of Tina's palette. It is really stunning. There's a lot of gorgeous texture in there. And literally, if, if I did want to pass this on <laughs> intact, I would depot Blossom because it's so pretty. I love that kind of like lavender smoky gray kind of shade. Gorgeous. Really, really gorgeous. And of the three, I do just think that like this is a color story that I'm more interested in but I am going to pass it on to someone because I just know I'm not going to use it but what I am going to do is I'm going to keep the one from Annette. Now I don't always get sentimental about makeup but I just thought it was so cool that Annette thought of me to send this collection to you. I've had the pleasure of getting to meet Annette and she's just like so super cool so I am going to keep this one. I'll swatch it for you and I'm going to keep it in my palette drawer. It's not like the Evanescence palette where I don't like I don't think I'll ever use it but it's probably not going to get a lot of play in my collection just because I don't play with this kind of color very often. And if I do, I normally mix it with a bunch of neutrals. I also adore this shade right here. It's the shade Ouroboros. I don't think Annette would have been offended if I like decided not to keep her palette, but I just, I want to keep it because it's like, it's just like a fond memory. I'm okay with one palette maybe not getting the most love because it like means something to me and allowing those other ones out of my collection because it was it was Annette's and like this is the most important one to me. So I'm gonna keep it even though it was like I like Tina's color story a little bit better but I, I just appreciate her and I'm happy to have this. My arm is just covered in glitter now so we're gonna let that go. So here's a palette that you might not even <laughs> know that I had. This is something that Andromeda sent my way. This is from Viseart. It's the Paris Love Letter palette and it's so stinking pretty. I haven't used it that much on camera but I've used it a lot in my personal life. Look at it. It's kind of like that like Bambi brown thing that Khaki talks about. Like it just kind of has all that with those two little pops but even the pops aren't even that poppy. This is kind of so my jam. I love Viseart's formula. Their shimmers aren't my favorite. I do tend to like something more impactful for shimmers and their mattes don't swatch that well because they're like they're the kind of formula that I really like which it doesn't really lend itself to being high pigment and swatch. I should have gave it because I probably won't use it that much but like I love playing with it and I love the colors of it and it's just it's much more usable to me but I think I'm gonna be a grown-up I'm gonna maybe I won't I think I think I'm gonna keep this for a bit if I don't use it that much between now and my big declutter in July then I can get rid of it then but I just not ready to let go of it because of like literally these three shades down here and then of course I love the mattes I'm gonna I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep it for now this bad I shouldn't I shouldn't I'll just pass it I'll let it go I'll give it to someone I'll give it to someone I'm gonna be an adult I love the colors, but I certainly can dupe this several times over in my collection. But I just really love those. I really love that. It's taupe. Imagine. I had so much stuff that I've been testing recently. This video is so long. Okay. <laughs> so sorry. I have some things from Bella Beauty Bar that we can discuss. We'll push those aside for now and we'll just talk about the palette because it's a little bit easier to talk about. So this was sent to me in PR. I was really shocked that an indie brand would want to send me their eyeshadow palette because as we just discussed, I like the most boring of eyeshadow shades. This is the basic witch palette and this is what it looks like on the inside. And at first you might be like me, you might be like, oh, that's a really pretty pink palette. But then when you cover, cover that up, look at that. That's something wild, right? And I've done grungy looks with it. I've done pretty pink looks with it. Here's what I'm going to say. Bella Beauty Bar is the first indie brand that has made a colorful matte that I've enjoyed to work with because they work the way I like my mattes to work. I don't like my mattes to be super bold right off the bat. I like them to be buildable and blendable and that's exactly what I get with the mattes from this palette. And then you get the beautiful like duochrome, multi-chromes of it all. And I really love those shades as well. And there's these... Shimmers pack a punch. <laughs> like, these are no joke shimmers. They're incredible. And I adore working with this formula. I'll swatch the palette for you because I haven't done that for you yet. And also, the shimmers are really soft. It's just kind of like Cleona. But you can tell when I swatch the colorful ones, they swatch a little more like Viseart than they did the ones from Odin's Eye. And then those purples, look at them. They're stinky in a good way. I said stinky, and I know that's like not the best. <laughs> sounding description. And then this black, just to point out, it is like a, a, 
an aubergine more than it is like a, a straight black. So I wouldn't call it my blackest black, but I, unless you're really specifically looking for that in this palette, I just wanted to let you know in case you were curious. There it is, swatched. Super pretty. And the one thing I really love about it is sometimes whenever these yucky shades get formulated, and I said this really recently, so if you watched that video, I apologize for repeating myself. A lot of times these yucky shades end up not looking as yucky on the eye as they do in the pan or in a swatch. These ones look just as yucky on the eyes as they do in the pans, which is a, a big compliment. It's called the Basic Witch Palette. It's really really stunning. When I first got this palette in PR, I was like, I hope this brand doesn't hate me. I'm probably gonna like try their palette, review it, and then be like, okay, like I'm just gonna pass on it. But I'm incredibly impressed with this. Should my relationship with Bella Beauté Bar continue? And I don't know if it will, right? That could always change that subject to the brand. If it should continue, I would love to have whichever one is my favorite always as a point of reference. And so this is my first one. So I'm actually going to keep this because I really have enjoyed playing with it. And you probably noticed, we talked about some other eyeshadow palettes here, and you've seen me wear this one the most. That's how much I gravitate towards it because the formulas are just incredible. And while I like the Odin's Eye formula, I think this formula blows the Odin's Eye formulas out of the water. Like I just, I like much prefer <laughs> what's going on with Bella Beauté Bar. The one thing I will say, and I this is also speaking to the other palette that I just got from them, I would really love to see them play with some sheer shimmers to with different texture in it, because I'm all about texture. And not to say that these textures are displeasing. I just find that a lot of them are high impact, maybe less this Witch Please shade. All of them are like pretty strong. <laughs> pretty strong shades. So I'm going to keep it, which I'm pleased to say. Like, I didn't think that was going to happen with this, but like Belle Beauté Bar, their eyeshadow formula is really killer. I think it's worth it. I will say this. I'm now affiliated with the brand. I do have a promo code with them at Hope Mess Tom. It would save you 10% off of anything. I don't know if it will be on the new release, The Secret Garden, when that comes out. I have no idea. Um, it's always worth a try if you were interested in buying it, but I know that Belle Beauté Bar is a little bit pricier, but I have just in my relationship with the formula so far have found that they are worth worth it. And while their packaging isn't, you know, the most pleasing to look at, it's still pretty high quality. So the palette they just sent me has removable pans. I don't think that these ones are. I hope that they stick with the removable pans moving forward. I think that's a smart move on their end. So I'm gonna keep this. These are some singles that Bella Beauté Bar sent me. And some of them are multi-chromes with holographic glitter in them. And I gotta tell you, I'm like not a fan of the holographic in the formula. And this is not specific to Bella Beauté Bar because I have some other shadows that have the holographic shimmer particles in them. They just look like they don't belong. And I feel like that they make the formulas like chunkier for no reason. I have one from Glaminatrix that is this like the, does the same thing. It's not like these colors, but like I'm not into this. Like I and I think on camera they read so pretty. But like in person I like don't I don't like the texture of them. They're just like chunky. I don't know. I'm just like not into like the I like I like hollow, but I just and I get on my nails. I don't like it in my eyeshadow. I know that we've like waited so long for that to happen. That's just not my thing. You might like them. These work well enough. I've played with some of the colors on my eyes. I've wore the blue a couple of times. The red, the green one, they're not like really my shades. And I will be honest, I didn't really play with this one, but wow, it's a beautiful multi-chrome. Although I feel like I have something from Cleona that's very similar to this. It's kind of like one of those orange gold shifting green shades. And then Velvet Glam, I adore. Door. <laughs> this is so pretty. I love that kind of like minty shimmer. And then this shade, Iconic Glam, gives off the same kind of energy. Although I think one of them is like a shifts pink because I remember thinking one of them was pink, but in the lighting I'm currently in, they both look super minty. I love these but I'm going to pass on the other four because I, I just, I'm not going to wear the holographic ones. And this is a beautiful multi-chrome, but I don't need another multi-chrome. And that's no shade to the brand, but like, 
I have so many Cleona shades. And that's not to say that they're like necessarily better. It's just, I already have it. So if I can pass a multi-chrome on to someone else, I'm going to go ahead and do that and give them that opportunity. That's the end of the video. Thank you so much for going through my testing drawer with me. That The testing drawer isn't even empty. I still have other things I gotta get through. But that's where we're at so far. <laughs> Subscribe if you'd like. My channel is mostly about loving my makeup collection as it is, but you know, <laughs> I did have some things to review, some PR I received that I needed to get through. Most of my channel is devoted to loving my makeup collection as it currently is, while being critical and a little bit cynical about new makeup releases and brands in general. So subscribe if you're into that sort of thing. I would love to have you subscribe. Channel memberships and Patreon, you can join that if you'd like, but you don't have to. There's no pressure to join those. It's just an additional way to support me, not a better way to support me. And then that's it. Remember to follow your host and you'll find me. I'll see you in a video very soon. Go forth. Tits out.